All right, Trips, today's video is going to be about mapping the UK's oldest trademarks. As you can see here, I've created a map of the UK and the boundaries are the UK's postal code areas and associated with each one is the oldest trademark for that postal code area. Uh, trademarks can either be um, just a, a word uh, or a phrase or they can be an image. So there's two ways that will associate a trademark with an area. Now trademarks um, have always been around in some form in terms of like making a logo or a distinguishing feature that identifies a product or associates with a, a company of some sort. But uh, back in 1875, the Trademarks Registration Act was passed, which allowed formal registration of trademarks at the UK Patent Office. So what this did was it kind of granted further protection over those identifying uh, terms or uh, figures. So the Patent Office, now the Intellectual Property Office, continues to maintain registers of trademarks. These trademarks, along with accompanying registration details, are available to the public and you can go and search them online, right? So you can go to their site and you can find detailed information about all the trademarks that have ever been uh, registered or even applied for. So you can even see the failed ones. So if you search for a trademark, um, you can use all uh, some sort of various search parameters to find something. Um, let's say we've searched for a word, for a similar word, and I'm going to type in something like, uh, yeah, here we go. Here's here's basically the first one, the base pale ale, um, and I'm going to search for that. And it's taking a while. All right, here we go. So here we found a couple of search results for uh, base and coat pale ale. And this is number one, the very first trademark that was registered under um, this new uh, framework. And when you go in, you can see the image here. And you can see there's some classes and terminology, there's kind of taxonomy of what, um, uh, what the trademark is associated with, in this case, Pale Ale. And you can see where it was registered, who, who the owners are, and some various other other details so you've got historic details here as well uh, all right let's have a look at the other search results we found here so we can tell um you can see here that for each one it gives you an image and where the company was founded, all that sort of stuff. So I got to thinking there must, I wonder if these guys have released this uh, data using an API. Well, there isn't, but somebody sent in uh, an FOI request and I, I found this FOI request and following the link, they said, yes, we do. We have released uh, data that you can use they provided a link. If you follow the link, you'll see the IPO trademark data release, which was published in 2015 and updated in 2018. So it's not totally current, but if you follow this, you'll get a zip file. And if you download that, um, there is an 800, or roughly about 800 meg um, CSV file in there that numbers over a million rows. Um, so, Downloading this and investigating this is something that I'm going to show you. And because spreadsheet programs can't actually open or deal with uh, a CSV file with that many rows, we're going to have to kind of handle that um, by uh, using SQLite database to uh, query the data as a normal kind of desktop program will just fall over if it tries to look at something like that big. Uh, so our first thing we're going to do is try this out, is have a look at getting the data, getting an SQLite database, making some queries. And once we've played around with it a little bit and had a little investigation, we'll try extracting the data that is of interest to us and recreate the map that I have um, put together over here. All right, to get started, we're going to download the data set. 
Uh, to do so, we need to go to the IPO's um, trademark day release. And if you go to Open Data and Domestic UK Applications, we click this, what we get is a zip with um, a file called opendatadomestic.txt. And it's very big, it's 817 meg for what is just a text file. And it is a value limited sort of a CSV file in there, even though it's got a .txt extension. Now, because it's over a million rows and it's rather large, any spreadsheet program will fall over when you try and open it. So the best way to take a peek at this is, or one good way to take a peek at this is to use uh, the terminal, in fact, and uh, use tail and head. So tail and head, head shows you the first 10 rows. I think it's 10. And tail shows you the last two rows. So we can see here um, actually that this is a pipe delimited file. So it's got this little pipe character uh, in between. And in, if we look at the head, we'll see that we have um, the very first row is a uh, <clears throat> has quite a few headings, uh, column headings. Um, so we've got the sort of things that you would imagine. And we've got the publish date and the register date, the different dates. Um, we have the type of trademark that it is, whether it's kind of, uh, it is an image or whether it's just a text uh, logo or a text trademark. Um, and then there are a few other headings that might mystify you at first, um, particularly these classes, which um, I can see here where you have for the actual trademark role, uh, there are inf there's just a load of, uh, it just seems like these are kind of binary data type. So if we're class 44 or class 30 or whatever, you'll just get a one um, against that. Uh, in that column for that row. Now, to make some sense of this, we're going to switch back to um, the IPO site to get some guidance. So, if you go over to Open Data Explained um, UK applications, what you'll you'll get is an explanation of the different um, the different headings, and most of these are kind of self-explanatory. And helpfully, we get a link so we can actually jump to um, the link for uh, the web page for that trademark. Um, now, all those classes that you saw there, and um, belong to a kind of classification system called the NIST classification, and it divides goods up uh, at a kind of top level in I think what was it 45 different into 45 different kind of um, top level headings and if you could have followed that rabbit hole um, you'll get to I, I think this is some kind of international WIPO which they should have looked up what WIPO is what's WIPO WIPI P, uh, World Intellectual Property um, people I imagine and um, in there you can dig down deep into what each of the classes means if you like, but we're not gonna go too deep into that. Now I mentioned earlier that this is a million plus rule um, text file. So to be able to uh, query the data and interrogate it, we're going to use SQLite as using kind of some sort of standard spreadsheet uh, tool isn't really going to cut the mustard. So um, once we've got, what we'll do is we'll get all our data into an SQLite database. Um, just one table will do the trick, I think. And from there, we'll use that to create a query for uh, the, the kind of some of the oldest um, trademarks that we're interested in, and then extract that into a JSON file, which is the kind of most probably most handy format for creating some kind of data visualization with uh, our query results. So um, if you don't know about it, SQLite is a kind of small, fast contained little uh, database engine. 
apparently the most used database engine in the world, which I don't quite believe, but apparently um, it is because, um, it, it, well, I think actually SQLite is used to back lots of like Android apps and uh, mobile applications. It sits there, it's very lightweight, um, but you can use it with quite large uh, data sets, right? It doesn't have to be just um, saving some settings for an Android app or something like that. Anyway, I'm going off on the tangent, so let's get back to it. So we've got our big uh, massive file. Uh, we have our next step ahead of us, which is to create an SQL database. We're gonna do that using Python. So to get started, I'm just going to create the database file by opening an SQLite connection. So um, to do so, all I need to do is to import SQLite 3. And I've created this kind of function called uh, create connection that when passed in a path, uh, it's just a string, um, it will open the connection and then close it again. And if it's all gone well, then it will print out to me what the version is and it will close the connection. And all I should really get out of this is just DB file at the path that I specified. So let's give that a go. I'm gonna go into my terminal, into the requisite place and run Python 3, uh, create DB. And it printed out the version. And if I list the files in my folder here, I now have a trademarks.db file and um, there's nothing in there, zero. So that's all I need to do for creating a new SQLite database file. Next thing I'm gonna do is going to be a bit more sophisticated. So I'm going to start importing the data from uh, our open data domestic.txt file. So we're gonna switch over to the code that I did, that I wrote to do that. Now that we've got a database file, we're gonna to have to get the data in there. Um, there's three things we're gonna do. First, we're gonna uh, read the text file that we have, the pipe separated uh, file with all the trademarks in there. And to prepare the database, we need to create a table with the same headings that we have in the uh, in the in the text file itself. And then for each of the rows, we're going to have to create our kind of insert statement to, to get it in there. Now, the first part, we're gonna import our SQLite uh, library to be able to talk to SQLite. Um, we're gonna open the file. Um, so this will just give us a, uh, I think this gives us a list of rows yeah, a list of rows. So every line will be a row. And for every line in that file data, so for every row there, um, every row at this point is basically just a string for each line. Um, we are going to append to a new empty list called rows and split that up into a, uh, sorry, we're gonna split that by the, uh, the pipe character that we're using to uh, separate the different values. So the end, I mean, what our row list will look like, it's gonna kind of look like a, a row of rows. So rows will be something like my first line. And in the very first line, we had our heading. So it will say something like name and then mark type, all of these sorts of things. Now, the next step, is going to be um, creating, getting that table going. I suppose it doesn't matter which step, which of these you could do first. Um, but the first thing we're gonna do actually is to uh, pop at index zero because we don't actually want to insert the headings that we have here. So uh, what we're left with the number of rows to insert. So we're gonna print out that we wanna do that. We're now gonna connect to the database that we, um, <clears throat> connect to the database that we created. So it was called trademarks.db in the same folder. Um, we'll have a connection cursor. So this will allow us to, this is gonna object the use to uh, talk to the database and run um, execute um, <coughs> uh, statements, SQL statements. 
Um, so the first one I'm going to do is create a table for the data. Now, I have added, uh, this is a very long statement because there are loads of headings and I want to include them all. Um, so this statement will create a table called trademarks. Now the only extra column that I've added here is an ID column that will give it a kind of primary key um, on auto increment. So we'll have our own ID for each uh, value in the in the table of trademarks. Next thing we're going to do is, of course, import into the table. So now um, I noticed that when I did this, that perhaps there were some pipe characters or some characters that the that maybe Python had a problem with. And it turned out that, well, actually that there weren't too many of these, not that I was going to be upset about. So, or nothing to stop me getting to creating the data visualization that I wanted to, to make in the end of the day. So I just decided not to deal with it. So I think What I'll do is I'll explain that in a moment. So effectively, we've got two variables here. We've got two, we've got um, inserts. So this is gonna be a counter for the number that we've inserted and a list, oh, empty list here that we're gonna to use to store the uh, any rows that failed in the import. So for every row, uh, we're gonna look through all our rows that we have here. Um, now, Len here can account how many values there are in in row. So we have 62 headings. So there's 62 columns. And if we have more than 62, then we have a problem because uh, our delimit our sort of separation using the pipe character probably found one too many pipe characters or decided to uh, separate it up into more than 62 rows. And so that we're not gonna be able to import that one. Um, I, this is probably something that we could come back to and fix, um, possibly because we've got a pipe character in a, in some text, maybe a company name or something odd like that, which <clears throat> isn't being, um, escaped using quotation marks or something. However, we're just going to ignore it for now. Um, the main thing is we're gonna have our insert statement. So our insert statement looks like this. So we insert into trademarks, pretty standard kind of insert statement into it, this table. And these are gonna be the headings. And you, this is an enormously long statement because we've got like 60 headings or whatever. And so the, <clears throat> sorry, the insert statement looks like this. So insert into trademarks, and then in brackets, all the uh, table headings in order, in the same order that we have in our uh, in our actual um, class one, two, three, four, uh, in the same order that we have in the in the spreadsheet, uh, using the values. And the way that it works works is we just say question mark, question mark, question mark. Um, for each, well, oops, sorry. And what it will do is the very last uh, argument here is the row. So it knows to use at index zero, put the value at index zero of the first question mark and so on and so forth. So that we get um, an insert statement for each uh, row in our loop. And once we're done with that, we commit so in fact running execute doesn't doesn't actually commit the uh, those statements to doesn't act, in fact manipulate the database at all it doesn't write to the database until you hit the commit um function and then close so we at this point will have saved our data into the table and we will have some failed rows. Um, now, finally, we print uh, our successful inserts and how many we failed. 
And then uh, as a last point, we um, just to take a look at what we uh, what, what failed, um, we write out some failed rows into separate CSV to sort out later. So um, we can deal with that. One thing I noticed here that might trip, trip me up at the beginning was the encoding. So it wasn't the default, I think, uh, UTF-8 is the, the default. I actually had to use UTF-16 to properly read this file. So let's give it a go. So I'm gonna switch over to my terminal. And <clears throat> in here, I'm gonna run part three, process data. And it's a big file, it's probably gonna take a while. So it's just gonna oh, be a blinking curse. Oh, roast insert, creating table, importing into table. Here we go. All right, so we have, <clears throat> uh, in, oh, how many? 1,188,910 successful rows that will do 94 failed and if we look at our list of files here we've got our failed rows uh, csv and our trademarks db file now has significant amount of um, data in there i say if you do ls alh it can tell you the size of uh, your it'll provide file sizes in like uh, units that um, we're a bit more used to so a 363 megabyte SQLite, well, that's more than enough for us to get on and look at our kind of historical trademarks. Looking at the failed rows, I believe they were, you know, there, there weren't particularly histor any historical ones in there, so I can ignore them for now. Oh, we can ignore them for now. Um, now let's go on to the next step and take a look at what's inside our SQLite database using an SQLite client. To play around with the database and run some queries, I'm going to use a SQLite browser. So if you go to sqlitebrowser.org and you take a look at this, uh, if you go to download, it's a kind of fairly bare bones uh, client <clears throat> that works for Windows, Mac OS, and on Linux. And it looks a little bit like this. So, we can start by opening a database. Um, I have code, lots of code here, uh, IP trademarks, and you just navigate to the .db file, hit open, and what it'll do is it will give you a, a list of tables. And so we can see our trademarks table here. And if we drop that down there, we get all our Um, headings. Now in the create table statement um, I had to kind of take care to set the uh, the various data types of the of the different headings so because the classes are always 0 or 1 I set that as an integer uh, the only other integer was the number of marks in series yeah that was another integer everything else I I just set it to text. There are some dates in here, but I didn't actually, I think there is a date time type, but I didn't actually get around to doing that. Uh, but I think we can manage for the moment anyway. So in order to, in order to actually go and uh, browse the data, you can use the browse data tab here and it manages to sort of uh, protect itself when dealing with lots and lots of rows. So we can go through here and we can see all the data that we have. So you can see here we've got different postcodes, regions, when it was filed, all the different classes, all this kind of good stuff. And then there's a hyperlink. So if I open Rage and Cajun here, uh, so it's not actually a link, but let me let me copy paste this from the. I don't know equals hyperlink. I, oh, I guess this is 
um, Excel spreadsheet language. And if I stick this into my browser and over here, we follow that link. Here we go, trademark region pigeon. Uh, oh, it's not um disclaimer, registration of this mark shall give no right to the exclusive use of the word Cajun. Yeah, okay. And we can see it's it's about um, mustard and salsas and stuff. Uh, back to the SQLite uh, DB browser. Um, the real magic comes when we start to run uh, SQL queries. So uh, if you're not familiar with SQL queries, um, the basic kind of uh, basic start is to run a select. So select asterisk from trademarks limit 10. So your a basic query will look like something like that. And when you hit the execute button, it will um, give you a result list of the first, I assume, I think this is just the first 10 that it found in there. And um, what is really, what is a really handy feature of this <clears throat> uh, of this uh, database client is that we have an export an export button so we can export results to JSON or CSV, which is dead handy for making visualizations. To interrogate this data a little bit more, I'm going to um, order by the, uh, the file date. So if we look over here, we'll see that we've got our um, a file date, a publish date and whatnot. Um, so we're using the order by clause and providing the, col the column, the field name, um, and then whether we want it ascending, descending, we can then um, sort our results. Now, what you do notice though is that there are some results here that don't have value. So, because this is just a because I've got oh, I've got some values here. Uh, because this is like um, just a text sort, it's not actually a date, but because it, it starts with the date, we're actually okay um, for, for the sorting. So we start off with blank is considered the first thing, and then we reach um, 1876 um, being the first number one coming before everything else. And we can actually see that that does actually fit in with the uh, our numbering system here. To give an example of using a group, I have this statement here. So we're going to group by we're going to group by region and order by the published uh, the published date. Um, so if I execute this statement, it will take a bit longer because it has to go through and look at all the um, has to perform a bit more of a sophisticated. Uh, query. So what we have here is a list of now notice I said like the limit is 130 but there's only so many there's only so many rows that come back and that's because uh, we've grouped by region. So we've got a region heading in here um, well so <laughs> first one is um, just a null value right so we've got a, we've got an entry in here that's just completely blank probably should get rid of that uh, the next one um, so these are regions of of, of the UK I, I imagine not applicable ah uh, yeah not applicable because this is the very first in the not applicable region which is trademark um, from the WM Wrigley company in the US so that's probably the very first um, trademark registered with the patent office outside of the UK um, and now we have not available, uh, region not available, region, okay. And then we get to the other real regions. Um, so we've got uh, the Northwest, East of England, uh, Scotland, with Scottish Newcastle, more beer, uh, Agar Rangemaster, uh, that's still going. Uh, Travel Lodge House, okay. Um, and there we go. Yes, yeah, so Isle of Man, we've actually got the Channel Islands and Isle of Man here, so we're technically beyond the UK as well. Um, all right, so that is 
sort of what we want, but in our visualization, we had uh, postal code areas. Now, post uh, postcode areas are slightly different from what we have here as postcode. The postcode area is the first two letter letters or the first very first part, very first. Um, yeah, I think it's very basically the very first two letters of a postcode. What's called co called postcode here um, isn't the full postcode. I cannot remember the exact term for the. There's terminology for the full postcode, a postal code area, um, and then there's the uh, post district and whatnot. Um, so we're actually looking for kind of basically the highest level, uh, the highest sort of boundary in the kind of postal system, which is the postal area. So what we're going to do is create a new column and we're going to update the existing uh, rows by taking uh, this postcode and then chopping up um, getting the first two parts in there and saving it. So we're going to go back to Python. To kick off this Python script, we import the SQLite and the regex libraries, connect to the database, um, get cursor objects so we can run and uh, run our SQL queries. Um, so in this case, we just grab everything that we have in the database and um, assign that to rows. Um, the next thing that I do is define a list of valid postcode areas. So the postcode areas here are pinched from uh, pinched from Wikipedia, right? So there's a Wikipedia article of um, postcode areas in the UK, and you can learn a little bit more about the whole um, postcode town system in there. But um, I I'm using this list really just to kind of validate that I'm getting correct. I just double check that I'm getting uh, a, uh, insert updating correct uh, data in the uh, in the database using the script and um, so anyway on to the next thing so for every row in the rows we grab uh, the ID which sits at uh, index 0 so that's the ID that auto incrementing ID that we added uh, it's the only thing we've added so far really to the data um, I'll come back to this condition in a moment uh, the next thing we do at index 5 is the postcode and what we are doing is we're using a regular expression here to basically grab the first two um, alphabetical uh, characters in the postcode. So our postcodes are usually something like EH8 or something like that, right? So this one basically says, give me, um, give me, give me an alphabetical and keep going until it stops. So eight. And what that does is return to kind of match object. So if that is, if that's, uh, it doesn't match at all, it'll be none. So this check if will fail. Um, if it does indeed exist as a match, what you can do is call this group and group zero will give you the very, uh, group will give you the first um, things that are uh, the first actual value of the match. So. Um, the first value in EH8 say it would be the actual EH character so you'll get a string back and so we check that that string is in our valid postcode areas right so um, if it's AB or something like that then we can do it uh, notice it's not always just it's not actually always two characters it can be a single character so um, that regex will also match that too um, so I think that's like one or more alphabetical characters in uh, succession. Um, so if we do match that, when we call execute on our cursor, and we our statement is update trademark set postcode area equals this thing where ID equals our index, our row index. Otherwise, we just pass. Now, um, as I said before, execute doesn't in fact, manipulate the database until you call commit. So that brings us back around to this condition that I uh, skipped over earlier. 
Um, and as you can see, it's commit every 5,000. The way that this works is row modulo 5,000. So if we've got a, a multiple of 5,000, then we can, uh, then we condition will pass. We'll call commit. So we will commit those uh, 5,000 kind of collected execute um, updates and we'll print uh, our changes so far. And then once um, this loop has actually completed, we're going to be left with a number of executes, a number of updates that uh, haven't been committed. Unless, of course, the number of rows perfectly is some perfect like multiple of 5,000, but that's very unlikely. So we're going to commit those, and then we're finally going to print and have a final sum of the changes that we've affected on our database. Um, now, there's one little piece of the puzzle that's missing here, and that is the fact that we are setting a postcode area field that we don't um, that doesn't exist in the table yet. Um, now we could either do it uh, using uh, using the cursor and execute and commit a alter table statement, alter table state, uh, trademarks, um, adding the postcode area text, or we can do it with the the uh, sorry the uh, database browser. So. Uh, using the database browser, um, the way to do this is to go to trademarks and go to modify table. And then in modify table, there is fields add and we can name this postal area and give it a type of text and save that. Back in terminal, we're going to run our add postcode area script. which will probably take some time. Oh, we can see the changes coming in. I'm gonna eat a bit of apple. And a raspberry. And a big sandwich. Okay, we've managed to affect changes uh, across 800, over uh, 800,000 rules in our database. Let's take a look at how our database, our data is looking. So I'm gonna run a query here, um, selecting the first, sorry, we're gonna select 20 ordered by the publish date and uh, let's see if we find our new column at the end here. Yes, we've got postcode area. Uh, so we've got some null values here. So I'm assuming these are uh, places without postcodes. Oh, Glasgow Health and Fitness. That should have a postcode, but it says not available. There's another one here um, from Australia. So that one doesn't have a postcode, so that's fair enough. But on the whole, it looks like we have postcode areas. Now that we've got postcode area, we can use that to group the oldest uh, trademarks. So I put together this statement here that should give us what we're after. We're selecting from trademarks where file is not blank. So the blank value will be ordered first in um, in the result set. So we can do away with that. Now I've had a look at some of these um, blank values and they're not historical at all. So for the purposes of what we're doing, we can kind of safely ignore some of the couple of bits of, of dirty data that we do have in our database here, some of the incomplete rows. So um, we're not gonna worry about that. We're gonna, sh we're gonna ask for the trademarks where file is not blank and we're gonna order by that <clears throat> filed column in ascending order. So we should start from 1870 and go onwards. And what we are doing here is we're actually like wrapping this up in a sub query. So you use these if you want to um, run a query and then further filter it. So our further filtering is going to be grouping by our new column 
postcode area and we're going to limit to um, 150 which I probably don't need that limit because we know that there's only so many uh, there's about only a, going to be about 120 or 121 um, postcode areas so let's run this screen uh, <coughs> let's run this query and see what we get back and that's going to be hit the play button here and because we're selecting asterisk here the, the asterisk here by selecting uh, all is about selecting all the columns from the trademarks table we can in fact specify fewer uh, columns if we like and here we are at the result set of our oldest trademarks per we've got 125 per uh, postcode area so what have we got here we've got essence of beef uh, the challenge uh, flax justice and strength so these are the I think these are the te uh, yeah this these are some of the text trademarks the names of trademarks um, by companies such as Unilever and Agri Range Master They're still going Scottish Newcastle still going um, Del Monte Group and if we go over here to the postal postcode area column we can see we've got a b l b a uh, all the way down to z e which i believe is the postcode area for the shetlands with valhalla some sort of valhalla brew beer this is great great name um and we can follow our high hyperlink uh text so let's follow that link and check out this uh, check out this essence of beef trademark um, it's quite interesting um, how do I get that Ooh, let's get this over here there we go yeah quite a I don't know is the whole paragraph a trademark I'm, I'm not really sure how what's going on here but that's maybe just the label as a trademark um, and then the signature um, and that's how we go from A to B to getting our data almost ready for our data visualization the next thing I'm going to do is just export that data using the handy export to JSON um, function so we're going to save it as oldest trademarks and that takes a little bit of time to export now once it's done this is what you get a large JSON file formatted to perfection and ready to use within our data visualization using D3 or whatever other tool you, you'd like to use. Um, now that's been significantly long. I feel like we could stop there and then park the SQLite, the data manipulation stuff, and start to think about how we can use this um, to create our map in the next video. So if you've enjoyed this, let me know by liking or hitting me up on social media. For now, uh, that's all for me. Bye.